Rembrandt's carcass of beef marked an important transition point in Western art in the 17th century. While in China, Bada Shanren's birds and rocks fully demonstrated Chinese artistic conception. Born in the same period but with different cultural backgrounds, how did they project their feelings in their paintings? More than 6,000 oil paintings are on display at the Louvre. Mysterious beauties and famous landscapes attract people from all over the world. But there are still many works that are not well known, and some that are even hard to understand. Carcass of Beef was drawn by the Dutch painter Rembrandt. What do you see in this painting? A bull that has just been killed, dirty and bloody. Yet the painting marked an important transition in Western art in the 17th century. In the Forbidden City in Beijing, there's a painting entitled Birds and Rocks. It was created by Bada Shanren, a well-known Chinese painter. What do you see in this simple painting? Its sharp and strange compositional style embodies the ultimate pursuit of artistic conception in Chinese classical painting. Born in the same period, Bada Shanren was 20 years younger than Rembrandt. But both had experienced major historical events. The Dutch Republic was established and the Qing army crossed the Shanghai Guan Pass. Which part of their sensitive hearts do their outstanding painting styles originate from? Paris, France, a city full of imagination. Fan Zhang, a Chinese painter, chooses to live in Paris. That's because this is the capital of art, and the Louvre Museum is here. In terms of classical paintings, Western artists prefer using multiple colors, while Eastern painters mainly resort to two colors, black and white. Why are they so different? Dongxi Rembrandt's paintings in the Louvre Museum are all realistic paintings, in which the backgrounds, people's body proportions and perspectives are very accurate. What else can we find in his paintings? Look at the rich but indistinct blending colours in the light and shaded areas. Do they bring out secrets from your heart? A 
At the first sight of Bader Shenren's paintings, one may think that he was a lazy painter. His painting only has one bird, one fish, or several strokes, allowing for large blank spaces. In fact, this simple painting style was very special at the time. Rembrandt's paintings seem complicated, while Bader Shenren's look simple. But in their own civilizations, both were considered out of tune with their own time. How can we explain this situation? Nowadays, photography is widely used by people to record their daily lives. But few people know that it was Rembrandt who invented this lighting technique. The Rembrandt lighting method makes use of light and shade to present three-dimensional images. Before that, Western painting required accurate measurements, and its bright and smooth lighting method met the needs of religious and royal topics. But Rembrandt changed this situation, and all because he came from Holland. Amsterdam was the busiest port in Europe. Its seaways, leading in all directions, brought the Dutch great wealth. By the late 16th century, the Dutch Republic had been established. Rich Dutchmen regarded oil painting as the most realistic form of household ornamentation. Paintings of that time depicted not only natural landscape and portraits, but also the goods that people owned. Look at the still life paintings in the Louvre Museum. Believe it or not, the feathers of birds in the paintings were bargaining chips for painters. If the price you offered was higher, the colour of the feathers would be brighter. If you gave extra money, you could ask the painter to add more light spots to the grapes. In these paintings, artists' skills could be measured and priced. But such paintings were easily forgotten. They were merely artistic products. This kind of painting broke the limitations of religious and royal topics. Art started to pay more attention to ordinary people. As a result, there were more chances for artists to create new lighting methods. A young man from Leiden called Rembrandt was one of them. Dans ces conditions, les peintures de Rembrandt, elles s'inscrivent dans un marché où on, on montre l'extrême richesse de, de la population hollandaise. Et euh, c'est très important d'avoir en tête euh, cette, euh, cette disposition économique, ce, cette façon de, de faire, puisque euh, Rembrandt euh, a été extrêmement prospère, c'était un peintre très riche hein, durant une partie de sa carrière. Rembrandt's works contained much potential. In 1632, he drew the painting the anatomy lesson of Dr. Nicolaes Taub. In this painting, he used a pyramid structure instead of putting everybody in one line. This intelligent composition had a great impact at that time. The anatomy lesson of Dr. Nicolaes Taub brought Rembrandt great honor and wealth. Painting commissions came in great numbers. 
Rembrandt bought a house in central Amsterdam. In this house, he drew many paintings of his beautiful wife, Saskia. In fact, most of his paintings at that time were portraits. Looking at the portraits in the Louvre Museum, you can imagine yourself wandering in Amsterdam in the 17th century, meeting the people in the paintings. Back then, Rembrandt was searching for a more unique lighting method for his paintings of daily life. He also endowed his brushwork with the realistic feelings of people. Individuality and self-awareness began to emerge in paintings. For Chinese people, such a free style of artistic expression was very familiar. In ancient China, people conveyed their inspiration about life and nature through various channels, and painting was one of them. Having been in development for hundreds of years, Chinese painting focused on expressing feelings instead of precise depiction. It seemed only this kind of artistic expression was the highest standard in Chinese painting. Bada Shanren's painting made this kind of artistic expression even more profound. Bada Shanren was a descendant of a royal prince of the previous dynasty. His original name was Zhu Tong, which was later changed to Zhu Da. He lived in Nancheng City, which had been an important trade center in the Central Plains since its founding in 202 AD. By then, Nanchang had become a bustling city of about 200,000 people. Its well-developed economy made the city open and free. This is where Bada Shanren's painting career started. In 1644, the Manchu army entered the Central Plains. The lives of the royals were ruined. Bada Shanren's peaceful life also ended. Four years later, he became a Buddhist monk and started to learn painting from his master, Hong Min, while cultivating himself. Huangma village, 50 kilometers away from Nanchang, is an ordinary village in Jiangxi province. 400 years ago, Bada Shanren's Buddhist life started here, in the Herlin Temple. From here, we will begin our journey to get to know Bada Shanren. Albums of Sketches from Life is one of his paintings. It was drawn in 1659, when he had been in the temple for nine years. His paintings were quite unique at that time. Zen, 
is a unified blend of lifestyle and frame of mind. It seeks spiritual enlightenment and pursues purity and wisdom. Today, we're not sure how Zen Buddhism influenced Bada Shanren, but we can explore his thoughts from a different angle. Bada Shanren always referred to himself as a person with a pure mind. Maybe for him, leaving large blank spaces in his paintings was one way to express his endeavors. This was a brand new style in Chinese painting, vivid but mysterious. In Fan Zhang's opinion, Rembrandt used simple brushwork to express the most subtle detail and changes in both the human body and spirit. Bada Shanren, on the other hand, made use of simple images to express himself. In fact, people don't need professional insights to be touched by their paintings. Tanya The birds and stones in Bada Shanren's paintings were drawn with only a few brush strokes. But the painter's feelings and inspirations were fully revealed on the paper. Bada Shanren, he Let's return to Rembrandt's carcass of beef, a shabby butcher's shop in a village, and a newly slaughtered bull. It delivered the most delicate changes and details through his solid brushwork. Donc si vous voulez, c'est le format aussi du tableau, ça lui donne une force, ça lui donne un impact visuel, la couleur, le fait que tout est grumeleux, extrêmement terreux, il y a une espèce de puissance de la touche, de vibration, c'est extrêmement tonique, il y a une tension dans la peinture. Paintings of such topics ushered in a new way to express feelings. Rembrandt's brushstrokes were vigorous enough to reveal people's true desires. From these two paintings, we can see that Rembrandt tried to look for peace through a passion, while Bada Shanren seemed quiet but aggressive. However, to fully understand an artist and his works, we have to go back to his time to know how he felt. This painting is one of Rembrandt's self-portraits. A tired old man, we seem to see unhappiness and resentfulness in his eyes. Maybe Rembrandt's life at that time was not very satisfactory. This is another self-portrait, which was completed in 1674. 
The thin, elegant man is wearing light-colored clothes, and we can see persistence and determination in his eyes. The man is Bada Shanran. The seal on the painting reads, descendant of a royal prince. From it, we can see he still missed his earlier royal life. These two men in the paintings were middle-aged. We can somehow see the turning point of their lives. The Night Watch, which was finished in 1642, depicts a group of Amsterdam militiamen. But not all the figures in the picture are completely visible, and some figures are even hidden in the shadows. At that time, this painting's style was not accepted, and Rembrandt was condemned as a cheat. The painting, which in modern times is considered a masterpiece, brought him a foul reputation. Meanwhile, in 1680, Bada Shanren had a sudden breakdown. He couldn't stop crying or laughing. People questioned his Buddhist training. It seemed that he still had a sentimental attachment to the secular world. With uncertainty and resentment, he burned his monk's robes. His name, Bada Shanren, has been well known ever since. His own inscription looks like the Chinese character for laughing. It also looks like another Chinese character, crying. Whether laughing or crying, it seemed that the painter was going through a tough time. Most great artists lived full lives of ups and downs and were always treated as rebels in their own time. Rembrandt and Bada Shanren were no exception. As a result, they had to resort to painting to express their feelings. That is why their artworks are so special. What did most people like in Rembrandt's time? Maybe from today's runway fashion shows, we can go back 400 years and experience the fashion trends of that time. Colourful clothes of various styles create our impression of the 17th century's Baroque style. At that time, rich Europeans idolised gorgeous decorations and luxurious styles, and they preferred expressing feeling through motion and changes. There are many Baroque artworks in the Louvre Museum. For example, Michelangelo's The Slave. Its twisted body reveals the artist's passionate desire to gain freedom and vitality. This way of expressing feelings through twisted figures extends to other Baroque artworks. These 21 paintings were drawn by Peter Paul Rubens for Queen Marie de Medici. They were the most typical Baroque paintings. You can't find any balanced or harmonious elements in these paintings. Rubens' intention was to reveal the Queen's supreme dignity and arrogance by depicting twisted motions.
Now let's return to the Louvre Museum, where many of Rembrandt's paintings are on display. This painting is Rembrandt's Bathsheba at her bath. This is a story from the Bible. Rubens also drew a similar painting. Ruben's version is full of his tributes to beauty. It seems that he's asking us to enjoy this beautiful world with gratitude, just as he did. By contrast, Rembrandt's version reveals a tragic atmosphere. The model for this painting was his nurse, Hendrika Stoffels. At the time, Hendrika was pregnant with Rembrandt's baby, but they were not married. We can feel her sadness and confusion through the painting. Il s'est tout simplement intéressé aux sentiments de cette jeune femme. Pudeur blessée, sentiment d'abus de pouvoir, d'être une victime d'un abus de pouvoir, et en même temps caractère irrévocable, caractère fatal de cette histoire, elle ne peut pas échapper à son destin. Et tout ça, ça passe par une technique, effectivement, une mise en scène euh, de ce corps nu, qui est, si vous voulez, une espèce de matérialisation du sentiment de mélancolie, de transposition, de euh, déréliction, qui se serait soudain fait chair. C'est proprement un coup de génie. By now, because of his painting Night Watch, Rembrandt had become a lonely individual in Amsterdam's painting circles. No one liked his paintings. His financial situation was getting worse. One by one, his wife and children passed away. No one could enter his spiritual world. He took to looking at himself in the mirror and drew self-portraits over and over again to express his passionate and complicated feelings in challenging mainstream painting. Although he lived at a time when paintings of the Song and Yuan dynasties were preferred, Bada Shanren sometimes also followed the mainstream. Landscapes, birds and flowers were arranged in a calm atmosphere. But we're fortunate that he didn't always paint like this. Having returned to the secular world, Bada Shannon started to pay more attention to nature and life. The lotuses, fish, Birds and stones in his paintings were drawn with antique brush strokes. He didn't describe every detail of these objects. Instead, he mainly focused on turning his disappointing life experience into a representation of the vitality of all creatures. Tung
Every time Bada Shanran achieved a new level in Buddhism, he would record his feelings in his paintings. Without meditating on Zen, he couldn't have drawn such a variety of vivid paintings. were trying to meet clients' needs, Rembrandt had begun to create new painting skills. Ah, la grande innovation, la, si vous voulez, la, la quête de Rembrandt, c'était de représenter le mouvement, de suggérer la troisième dimension, d'avoir par la couleur, par la texture, par la tension dans la toile, une illusion de réel. Sticking with color and lighting, Rembrandt created a mysterious and subtle style. Eventually, in the 19th century, his genius came to be appreciated. Although Bada Shanran had suffered many frustrations, his paintings reveal only purity instead of struggle or confusion. Bada Shanren created many unique marks with his brushes in his paintings and reached a peak difficult for others to equal. the subject of a painting is not so important. What they care about most is touching the soul through color, lines and brushwork. To understand a painting, we have to go deep into the painter's heart, because the theme of the painting is rooted in the painter's own understanding. In his later years, Rembrandt looked back on his artistic life and said, painting does rely on what you see, but more importantly, it relies on how you look at it. Bada Shanran also told people in one of his poems, his paintings contained his own rich life experience.
Similar experience had provided Rembrandt and Bader Shanran with extraordinary talent. Their different cultural backgrounds and artistic expression doesn't affect our understanding of their paintings. Le bœuf écorché, qui a sans cesse inspiré les artistes, je veux dire les artistes modernes au XXe siècle, Soutine, Picasso s'en sont inspirés. C'était comme euh, euh, un phare, si vous voulez, quelque chose qui, qui, qui était une lueur, qui, qui les attirait. Et ça, c'est essentiellement dû à la technique, à la force, à l'expressivité du tableau. Bader Shanran's clean and simple brushwork has also had a great impact on today's artists. Over 2,000 years ago, Socrates said that in every one of us there is a sun, so long as we let it shine. Rembrandt and Bader Shanran lived at the same time, yet they didn't know each other. Both of them have created priceless artistic legacies through their paintings. Surprises, guesses, imitation, and misunderstanding. Three hundred years ago, in the period of Rococo art, what happened when the East and West communicated with each other for the very first time?